Okay, so it's one o'clock. What's going on? Or it's one o five, and uh, we started with uh, Joni Mitchell, uh, who, by the way, I don't know if you know this, Kevin. She is a painter. Did you know that about? Uh, I do. You know about I do. Yep. And I thought it'd be appropriate. I, this comes from a particular uh, album, which is the name of that song, "Night Ride Home." And you'll later on we'll play a little bit more music, which I thought befitting your work since uh, you do a lot of interiors. There's some, some of that going on. But today, my guest here on What's Going On is uh, another guest. You're the, this is the second show we did today of a, uh, a painter who has uh, work in – Kevin's show actually is currently up in the President's Gallery, directly outside of the President's office. Um, through the LaGuardia Gallery and under the direction of Dina Pizzarello. And uh, you, 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 I introduce you as Shanghai Kevin Yu. Yes. Is that your? Yes. Yep. Your, uh, but, but, should I be, but during the interview, I'll say Kevin. Yes. It's just, it makes everything easier. So <laughs> very good. Yeah. It's a business name. Uh, what's, what's the uh, Shanghai? Are you Chinese? Uh, I'm Taiwanese. So Shanghai. Taiwanese. Is, yeah. So Shanghai is uh, in Chinese character. That's a translation. Yeah. For Taiwan. Uh, yeah. So the language is Chinese. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very good. Well, tell us tell us some more about yourself. Your background. Your 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 interests. Your studies. So I was uh, born in Taiwan. Um, I studied all the way up uh, to when I was sixteen, and um, thought that there was something missing in my life, but I didn't know what it was. And uh, just so happened, my mom had a Canadian English tutor who, because we always uh, threw the idea of studying abroad around, but we always thought that it was going to happen after, maybe after high school or after college. Um, but the tutor um, told my mom that that would be too late in terms of language skills. So... So my mom just mentioned the idea to me of me leaving right after junior high. And I just grabbed onto that right away. That was like what wow. I, I knew that was what was missing, even though I didn't know. I didn't. Yeah. It's not like I had a. What is a, what? Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, what age is that? Because I know different schools have different, uh, uh, different so countries. Fifth, have different... 15. So that would have been uh, grade nine, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so where did you go? I went to Vancouver. So I, right. yeah, language school for a year, dropped a year because of my language. Um, yeah, and finished high school there. Uh, then I came to New York. Uh, I went to Parsons for my undergrad, Parsons School of Design. Right. Yeah. When did, you, when did the art come into the picture? When did you start uh, thinking about art as a, as a focus? That was... Like what I so the junior high I took um, it, I went in, I uh, attended a special class we had to take an exam and it was a special art class focus it's academic plus art so we had uh, maybe four times or five times as many as much art classes uh, as other people um, wow but it was also very academically focused uh, so then when I went to uh, Canada I had that in my mind um, all through high school that I was going to do something art related. I didn't know it was going to be fine art. It could have been design, right? Um, but it just became that um, as I went to, because the first year in foundation in college, you don't, you get to experiment, experience and choose what you want to do. And I just kind of fell into it. It felt right. Yeah. Why did, why did you choose New York and Parsons for, any particular reason? Well, as a, as a, this sounds kind of maybe sounds kind of silly, but as a person from an island state, <laughs> it right. just seemed like the mecca. Um, so it was there was no particular reason. It was oh Paris, Rome, New York, but then New York, as a foreigner, had this this mythical draw of where where everything happens. So right. that was uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't know anything when I was nineteen before I experienced right. New York. So, yeah. How did you find Parsons as a, as a school to, uh, you know, for you as a burgeoning artist? I, I loved it. Um, at the time, the foundation program was very, very intense. Incredibly intense. We, we were doing 21 credits. Um, 
and uh, and they were intentionally giving us so their their guideline was was th every three hours of class they intentionally give you three times the the amount of work to see how you handle so so oh, it was yeah. a really high pressure situation like I, like within two months people we have the first person broke down in class and just cried because of the pressure and the pr <laughs> wasn't sleep wasn't sleeping you know <laughs> right of and they were they were really yeah they were really strict and if you're like if you're late um within 15 minutes like two tardies equals one absent and three absence you're you're you fail that class so right. even if you come to class 15 minutes late your that counts as an absent so it was pretty strict but I, I liked it. I, they, yeah, how long ago was this? What, this was what long years are we ago, talking? Like 2006 to 2007. Not that long ago. Well, uh, yeah. it's interesting to find out how strict because I mean, LaGuardia, if it's, it, that's not <laughs> that's not the model. Yeah, I mean that it, it's kind of unusual, actually. Um, oh, is it? Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think most most universities and colleges that they their attendance wise, they're a little bit more relaxed. Um, right. But I think for the design or art uh, um, courses or schools, participation really matters. You can't right. just take an exam and prove that you know the stuff at the end. You kind of have to show through the process, you know, discussion. Yeah, portfolio with, yeah, review, yeah. yeah. Did you stop with the bachelor's or did you go on? So after the bachelor's, I had to do the, um, the national uh, uh, service in Taiwan. So I went home in 2010. Um, but because I studied abroad and I had uh, um, English uh, uh, as a skill, I only did a boot camp. Then I worked at the local government for a year, a little over a year, a year and four months. Then I came back to New York for my for my graduate um, degree. So there was a two year uh, gap there when I had to do two my... year gap. So every every Taiwanese citizen has to do a two year stint in. The uh, in, in the armed forces. Uh, yeah, it's a, it, at the time it was a year, a little over a year. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so when you decided on graduate school, what did, where did you decide you wanted to go? Uh, New York Academy. Oh, New York Academy. Yeah. yeah. I I think of that as a film school. Oh, there. Were, I think there there was a New York. There is a film school with a similar name, actually. Right. But this New is, York this Film is, Academy. Yeah, this is probably, yeah, yeah. New York Academy is, is focused on um, bridging traditional uh, skills in painting, drawing, sculpture, and, and contemporary discourse. So that was, the, that was their, um, what the school was about. Then, and because there were very few schools that were actually teaching um, hands-on stuff, um, besides the more conceptual. Right. And so you and but you focused on painting. Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. All right. Why did why painting over all the other disciplines? Any particular reasons? I I'm not sure. I think I think it's like certain medium just speaks to you, maybe. I'm I'm not entirely sure. But I I'm now I'm expanding. I always felt like I could do um I could make work in multiple mediums, but I needed a starting point to flesh out what my identity is as an artist. And painting was uh, natural to me. Right. Yeah. I mean, I usually, for me, I, I think it I, classically, it's the where the people respond to two D or three D. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. you got you have the sculptors. Painting is pretty much the dominant two-dimensional i mean everybody and painters most painters have to draw mm -hmm. and uh, i don't know if they, if they they had you doing printmaking as well yeah I, yeah in, yeah in printmaking uh oops sorry I, my, I just lost my screen for a second there and uh but yeah i always think about because i you know the, the, there's the sculptors who usually hang out off in some distant space <laughs> uh you know whatever you know, yeah, paint, they're, their own, they're their own type. Yeah, but painters, I mean, the, the there's more, there's always more painters. Yeah, the, the stereotype, I think, would be the sculptors are more doers and painters more, um, maybe talkers. <laughs> so so really? they sit around, I think so. That's that's my I experience. It, yeah. um, I mean, I think if painters just covered in paint, 
as the, where the sculptors are usually covered in dirt and using work wearing everybody wears work boots <laughs> yeah. and everything but yeah. so so you get out of graduate school and what was next i just um basically started working as an artist and that was it yeah and you're, it's your full time it's your full time thing mhm mm mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's pretty fortunate yeah particularly here in new york uh so how did you find the LaGuardia Gallery, or how did it find you? Actually, Dina and I went to uh, the Academy in the same year. Oh, really? So she, yeah. So we reconnected uh, recently, and she's been following my work. So she invited me. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah. So it's a very short, <laughs> short explanation. Yeah. Right. Oh. Uh and so it was just, a, and and you determined this time. But did she? But but the, did she kind of? How did she review your work from your website, or how was it? How did that process happen? So she's seen my work before, and uh, right. um, and just based on uh, 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 what I've been posting, um, she was wondering if she could perhaps uh, do a show with me. Yeah. Did she? And did she pick the pieces, or did you? She did. She did. Yeah. And. Uh, um, because I feel like, um, in terms of the pieces, they're all one. Uh, so I don't really work in series, or at least I haven't so far. They're all one continuous stream. So um, with the work that I uh, that she selected, they they all fit together already. So right. so I I gave that. Um, uh, it's a curatorial decision. I feel like that's that's her um, uh, right. right. You know. Her, her creative process in curating the yeah. show, yeah. Or did you play a role in hanging the show? Uh, no, because of COVID. So there was, of course. Yeah, yeah. So have you been able but, to even see the show in situ? Uh, not yet. Like, I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> are you really? I yes, yes, yeah. So I saw it before you did. It looks great. Yeah, yeah. And it's in the premieres. Uh, again, you're in the President's Gallery, which is the premier yeah. space. Yeah, I went to see yeah. the space. We walked around and we discussed uh, the hanging. So she, she uh, kept me in the loop, definitely. I just haven't been so able you, to make it out there after yeah, I was gonna, the oh, show so, was hung. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna, so you went before, that. You, mm -hmm. you've been on campus before. Yeah. 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 What, so uh, would you like to talk a little bit about your work? Like what are some of the ideas behind it or, or uh, you know, your process? Well, there is a um, uh, so with with painting, like painting to me, there there is the image side, and then there is the material side, and uh, I'm trying to figure out how to bridge the two. And in terms of the narrative of it, um, that that so that's the conceptual idea. So like that's important for me as a painter, the the distinction between image and and the material working. Uh, of paint and what, how that connect to the image conceptually. Um, and then on the narrative side, uh, it's there are um, objects uh, that I have with me um, uh, in my daily life and, and sort of snippets of stories that I see. Um, uh, for example, like the, 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 uh, the, um, the coat racks, I grew up with those um, and it's strange, but I see them as people, They're like stand in as people. And uh, I start uh, thinking about how I can um, not use the figure, but could still uh, create narratives about relationship, um, about uh, uh, the idea of, of love, life and death, uh, that kind of stuff. Like size so, the the image of the of, of people, but still see if I can access that. So it's as, as if the furniture were people. They're they're anth you're anthropomorphizing, you know, s still objects, inanimate objects, and turning them right, giving them right, you know, but, human ins human uh, whatever traits. Right, but I but I also want them to. Uh, um, I don't want to distort them. Uh, so. I want them to feel like they're possible in real life. I don't need them to have, uh, I don't need to give them eyes or anything like that, but just a scenario and how things are set up. That's what makes them feel like people or, yeah. or not necessarily. So, so they don't, they don't have a, a proactive agency in, in my paintings. 
they were sort of sitting there. But because of the setup, it feels like they, they could move, even though they're not. And that's my experience of the objects around me, too. <laughs> because in a oh, weird yeah. way, they're made for us. You know, we're in a strange way, we're, we're, we interact with them all the time, but we, but we never really think too much about it. Um, uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, and we're going to look at, we're going to probably, we're going to, in the next quarter hour, we're going to probably look at sp very specific paintings. But notice there's one, I saw one element recurring, which was uh, a small chair, a right. chair that looked like a, ba like a baby chair. You want to talk about that? So I, um, a lot of the stuff uh, I also, f I might have found on the street. I mean, just that's part of, uh, <laughs> of the, uh, um, I guess the uh, the experience of living in New York is sometimes you find stuff uh, on the street furniture and and the baby chair is interesting because there there was a uh, baby store and I was just taking a walk at night there was a big pile of garbage and that must have been their window display and it was made by hand and they just I guess they didn't want to throw it out completely so they didn't put it in the back they pushed it right on top. Which is already, it, there's this tiny chair perched on top of bags and bags of, of garbage. And I thought, that's, I got to have that. that. That already is a character. So I knew that I could bring that into my, uh, um, uh, into my painting world, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. But I just see, like, you, you well, again, we're, we're going to be looking at the images, but you kind of place them in, sometimes in nat what, what's natural, a kind of a natural, sometimes, you know, obviously in kind of an awkward situation is it is it supposed to be like a, a child within the uh, adult world of furniture yeah yeah it yeah is? yeah it is yeah yeah okay now in and you know it doesn't surprise you know i we had man and raman on earlier who does uh the nude figure predominantly women mm -hmm. but with a kind of a, an expressionist style of uh particularly with well with the color textured and things like that yours uh, but but it's a figure and now your style is uh you know highly representational i mean it's uh it's you know your renaissance perspective uh you know everything is rendered short of at first the, when i first started looking at your stuff it you know i thought it was a, a trompe l'oeil style until i saw it face to face and i realized that you know the, the with your uh, i don't know what it is your finish it's a more of a kind of a matte finish it, mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't necessarily you know you're you know you're looking at a painting it's okay. not a well that's a good thing a, to me yeah it is well why because you're not trying to do a trompe l'oeil style like a, mm -hmm. you're not trying to fool anybody into yep. that these objects are real right 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 yeah and also well, like, like the, in, in terms of ahead. the painting process the all the backgrounds are are invented well oh painting. really Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So so it was the objects that I have reference of, but obviously there, there are normal colors I wouldn't share or something. So everything else is. So I would have these objects, and I would invent the space based on the objects, and also fuse in um, like particular, like um, for example, the one uh, uh, called Room of Observances. That one, I I wanted to see if I if I take a religious painting and emptied right. out the religious symbols, which is the figures. Um, if I have the structure of it, so the composition and the color scheme, can I still, um, um, like, wh what do I have left of it? And for me, there is like a connection, a strange connection, deep connection between the small chair and the rocking chair that that is still present. And, and a lot of it is because of um, uh, the 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 background, which is which is based on invented based on uh, um, uh, Van Eyck paintings. Oh really? So and then there are other so then there are other uh, um, uh, 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 backgrounds I invented that are more based on um, uh, um, like languages, color wise, and space more contemporary to um, like the one with the uh, garden party. That's definitely uh, something that's like the color combinations are are of like the the green and the the orange and. That's more um, common now. It's floating around. That's the zeitgeist. A modern, a, mo a more modern palette, as right, opposed right. to like more, a more Renaissance palette. Yeah. yeah, yeah. More contemporary palette. Yeah, yeah. All right. I almost feel like we may be we may be putting off too long, looking at the pictures, and maybe we yeah, you because know, we're referring to them so much. Maybe we should start looking at the pictures a little earlier. 
And I don't know if uh, if my engineer Chris Chris Pope uh, back there, uh, Chris, I don't. Are we in a position where we could start looking at some images from uh, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chris has been much more yeah. vocal on these last two shows lately than before. <laughs> Usually he's just like a presence and things just start happening on the screen. Oh, excellent. Okay, so the audience that can't hear it. All right. That's good to know. So the folks at home who are watching, uh, something's going to happen in a minute. All right. And he's, it's good. I, I, we, we try to show these so they're not distorted. Can you, can you see it? Uh, Yep, Kevin? I can see it. Okay, so we're looking at this blue upholstered chair, and there is the baby chair, uh, but it's sitting. I guess they're they're outside. So, so first question is, uh, is how much of this is invented, and how much of this is you, uh, you know, drawing or painting from life? I mean, did you set stuff up outside? So uh, no. So the what I had was just the normal. A cushion and a rocking chair that you'll find anywhere really it's just wooden rocking chair um the baby chair is just uh, uh solid wood shellac um yeah and then and then and then the, the chair in the middle is actually just the ikea chair with the ikea cushion so i, I changed mean, the all the yeah. colors and everything yeah but did you set this up physically in order to render and paint it or no is, so you're just I, putting this cut and paste Kind of I actually, I actually took uh, uh, photos as reference. Yeah. Oh, so you're painting from photographs. Yeah, but there was a little bit. So, like painting from photographs is interesting because you need to know like the field of photos. Um, right. So with this, I, I actually can't. There's no way I can have the amount of detail that I want to be able to see and also uh, not have the distortion. So this is actually stitched together. There's probably twelve photos. Um, and then the entire background's uh, made up. The grass uh, and everything else is made up. And I'm, you're working in acrylic, right? That's all oil, actually. Oh, this is oil? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. How big are these? I mean, I, w I guess I was there. I saw them. I remember them yeah. being about, yeah, I, I don't know what, like I think two or three feet high, maybe? Yeah, this one might be uh, 50, 60 by 36, 48, but I'm not entirely sure. It was a weird number. I think it was 50. I'm going to have to look that up, actually. Um, yeah, and oh, so, it's, 60, it's 60 by 36. So there's a yeah. five foot tall. Yeah, it's five paint. by three. Yeah. Five by three. Yeah. I guessed acrylic because it seems like they, they feel a little bit muted. But is that something about the finish that you're putting on them? Or how, how does that? Uh, Me, the, what do you mean by muted? I don't know. The colors feel, I don't know, well, less they, saturated. They, the image is a little bit, I think. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think it's the image, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what about the choices of the colors for the chairs? I mean, they all seem like they're multicolored. I don't know what that's supposed to be, shadows or, or what's going on there. But what's that about? Which, which part? Well, for example, the baby rocking chair is yellow, blue, and brown. The chair on the right, with the uh, you know the armrests, it's like I got a pink top with the with the blue oh, dowels. Right, I see. So like the the I didn't I didn't want it to be too obvious, but those are so there are skin tones and and hair colors and skin colors and and shirt and shorts and things like that. In order to animate these people, right, right. So it's not an accident that the cushion in the center. Looks like a button-down shirt. Right, right, yeah. So, so I would actually, so, so, I, yeah, I would actually go uh, online and sort of mix and match to see what kind of outfit that, and and uh, and colors I want them to wear in my in my mind. Yeah. Where would you look? Where would you where do you look for the uh, for the? So the... so these are these are so I wanted a summer feel. So right. there are a lot of yellow and, you know, like the, uh, um, like a turquoise shirt with salmon shorts. Yeah. Like really common during summer or, 
or a blue top and then with like a, a pinstripe skirt. Would be, yeah, they uh, call it seersucker, I right. think, maybe. Yeah. Which is summer fabric as well. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of a nautical feel, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, I live in Connecticut, so this is totally the uh, whatever the, the look. Let's go. Let's try another one, Chris. Can you show us the next one? We're coming closer. We're going to probably take a break in a couple of minutes for the for our station ID. All right. So uh, we're looking at it now here. So yeah. here are the uh, what, what do you call these things? The, are they the, hat the racks? Coat, they're coat racks. Coat racks. Yeah. 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 I have one right behind me over here. And I was trying to yeah. say what it was today. All right. Like the one thing I picked up on this in this particular painting, though I'm 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 interested in playing games again with the clothing in a second, is yeah. the carpet looks like it's reminiscent of a Matisse cutout. Of Matisse yeah. cutouts. Yeah. Is that they're, deliberate? Yeah, they're actually they're actually uh, exactly Matisse cutouts, but I I changed the colors. Oh really? Um, yeah. Wow, you're a brave man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and, and yeah. I don't know if people can appreciate this, you know, again, because my audience is not necessarily an arts audience. But, mm -hmm. you know, the last – so we could just say that it, at the end of his life, when Matisse was bedridden, in fact, you know, they brought him colored paper uh, and scissors. And he was literally making these cutouts mm -hmm. of figures – uh, which for Matisse, the two things the, the two things about Matisse's work is was his was his contour line and the colors. You know, mm -hmm. is ex expressing himself through color, and so there was this final this final piece of work. So it's a very well known body of work. So what made you want to introduce that element into it? And oh wait a minute, by the way, it's one twenty nine. This uh, you're watching Laguardia Web Radio WLGR. I'm your host Hugo Fernandez of the show What's Going On. And today, my guest is Shankai Kevin Yu, who is a painter whose work is currently on view in the President's Gallery on the fifth floor of the E Building. Uh, thanks to the LaGuardia Gallery and the director, Dina Pizzarello, who uh, made this all happen. Uh, so we were talking about uh, the introduction of Matisse cutouts to your painting. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to see, um, uh, uh, like I... So with, with this, this series of paintings, I'm constructing rooms where um, there are certain rules that will be bound by it. And I haven't made, I'm, I'm not someone, so like this painting was not very comfortable to make for me because the front room was the, like the, the clothing is more 80s style uh, patterns. And then the middle was Matisse. Um, and I, uh, um, yeah, I, I wanted to see what the what the connection is um, between the two. So a lot of times I, I don't. So um, one way of working is you you know how it's going to present itself and what it will mean. That's why you put it in. But for me, most of the time when I paint, I actually want to put it in to see what I get out of it. Um, so the the uh, uh, yeah. So it was a, a, a simple one. It was a visual, it was a visual um, uh, connection between the two. Right. I'm trying to think of like the Hawaiian shirts I used to wear in the 80s uh, with that yellow, that yellow one <laughs> that, uh, you know, yep. that is so loud. And, uh, but again, this is, so this is, uh, they're hanging, it looks like the, so again, what's peculiar is you would never have two, two hat or coat racks next to each other like this. Right. <laughs> and it looks like they're, they are standing, you know, uh, on the side of a wall, uh, or the, like the other room. It's that they're, they're, uh, they're kind of scoping out or keeping an eye on the Matisse to mm -hmm. make sure it doesn't, uh, do Slip anything. away. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. whatever they... I'm, a, I'm actually, I'm actually pretty excited because I, like once these rooms are created, I'm I'm reusing them. So then the 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 room with the Matisse carpet, that's set. And then in the future, I would do things in that room too, set things up, um, in that room. Is yeah. this all in one house or something? It's supposed to be mm -hmm. one building. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Chris. Let's see the next one. So this is one where at first I thought. I didn't know if something trompe l'oeil was going on because the, this ear, this ceramic ear, 
which looks familiar. I don't know if it's supposed to be like the David's ear or something like that, or uh, some ear from uh, the surrealism, you know, like a, uh, whoever it would have been, Magritte or Dali, a Dali ear. Mm-hmm. But because uh, it's really well done. And uh, and then but th- then it's you've got that hot pink intercom uh, over there and uh, quite some, some you probably could make a living designing uh, wallpaper, by the way, because I'm sure the, the people get excited by these patterns that you create on them. So you want to talk about this one a little bit. Um, the uh, so the the original the, the very very beginning my idea was to i want to do an experiment to see if i paint it from life what that would look like with an inventive background and photo reference so then i painted the so that that is uh david's ear uh by michelangelo it's a cast of it um so i painted that from life and this setup is is very similar to how how i have it in my apartment so I do have that ear really, really close to the intercom. Yeah. So oh, I just yeah. imagine. Well, it's, yeah. a funny, it's a funny kind of a sight gag, right? You know, mm-hmm. listening in on what's going on. Yeah. Did you want to go on or was that it? I, uh, what's, uh, uh, I don't know. And then uh, you uh, just, I, I didn't know if you were finished talking about okay, painting that. Okay. And then another part was uh, um, uh, about the composition. Because in the past, it, things are always more in the center, and I wanted to have more disparate uh, uh, composition to see what it'd be like. Since I set up um, those characters already, I wonder if it would seem like they're they're peeking into a scene. Because the intercom is obviously not anthropomorphized, um, even though it's an object, and the ear isn't either. But uh, um, but like chairs, there are some things that to me are more um, more like characters that already established in my in my paintings. Um, if, if yeah, if anything, for me, it, the wallpaper suggests sound. You know, okay. like sounds, you know, sound waves moving around, in going in and out of the ear, or whatever. But that's just me. I just wish I only wish that my students were watching the show so they could so I could get some points for actually figuring out that that was the David's ear. <laughs> Yeah, but um, but maybe you know the average uh, art graduate would probably know that. So maybe okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. All right. So this one, I was this looked like something was going on where you were trying to animate some sort of robotic objects here. I was right. I couldn't quite figure out what these objects were. So they are they're really old school uh, blender. Ooh. So. So my, so that therefore um, uh, uh, grinding, pulverizing medis- um, herbal medicine. So the top with the handle, you can actually open. Right. The blades inside. Yeah. It's like a fruit processor, but an, an, an older version. Were these yeah. like were these like in Taiwan or something? The mm-hmm, Taiwanese mm-hmm. food processors. Yeah, that's in my that's in my uh, dad's clinic. My dad's actually oh, okay. a, a, a Chinese doctor. All right, Chinese herbalist. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. My, so my, they're all, my, originally yeah. they were all uh, they're really heavy and they're made of uh, stainless steel. Uh huh. Yeah. And so what's the so is that block that the blue ones on top of is that some sort of block where they used to crush medicine or something? I'm just trying to yeah, figure so, that out. So, yeah. So that that's actually kind of that one's uh, um, originally they were made of wood. Right. But I, I wanted them to be more marble and granite. That's why I just changed the material of it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a scene so, about, yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. No, this is a scene about, um, uh, so in, in the past, um, wealthy people would commission painters to paint adoration scenes, and they would paint themselves in, uh, in front of uh, Madonna and Child. So that was, right. that was the, uh, um, the setup. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, the I didn't I, I didn't figure I didn't maybe I did when I saw it but now I I hadn't picked up the so the cross on there is not a medicinal cross but it's supposed to suggest a Christian cross well, actually that cross that was um always there on on that particular um uh, the container for medicine but right. I just removed I already had that I just removed the other words that would suggest that it was a uh, medicine so it was yeah. 
sort of a happy, it was something that I, I, I left um, uh, while I was editing out things. Yeah. Yeah. And are you, well, so you, when you mentioned mother and child, like Mary's colors were, uh, were blue and red. So I guess the blue for it, the robe is the purse is the object on the left supposed to be anybody in particular? No, it's uh, it's it's uh, the pulverizer itself. Right. So, so it doesn't matter that it's a red. Right. The red isn't supposed to suggest well, that, anybody. Uh, no. So that's that's actually based on uh, um, uh, a painter, a painting by uh, by a painter called Vender Vender Biden, the mm. uh, Northern Germanic uh, painter. Um, right. Yeah. So that was sort of the the color scheme, the original color scheme of the of the uh, um, the characters or the objects. So then again, the things around it were invented um, in response to the the object. And the lighting, because I see you have a strong shadow and what seems like a strong uh, light coming from the right uh, mm -hmm. side of the of the objects. Is that deliberate too? Is that to imitate the master? Or to approximate kitchen lighting, or something, or or uh, antiseptic, uh, whatever type of lighting. I actually, I mean, honestly, lab. I just, I just really like the form. <laughs> that's why that's why I, I stood up that way. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> that's really the the reason. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do another one, Chris. Or are we running out? Was that all seven? That was only image four, I think. Yeah. We have three left, you're saying? Okay, okay, so here's one where uh, it's interesting because what I'm seeing on my screen, by the way, on for what it's worth, on Skype is not what I'm seeing on Twitch. On Twitch, the, the image has changed, whereas on Skype, for some reason, it's frozen. Okay. So this is the one. I mean, can you see this too, Kevin? Where I, it's, could, I could see it's it. It's the little chair on top of the blue chair with a, yeah. red, with a yeah. red pillow. Mm -hmm. So this is the one where I started thinking like it's a, you know it's a little baby chair, mm -hmm. you know I got that notion of a baby, and again the colors are those are the colors of the Madonna. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was deliberate. Yes, yeah, it was. And then and then the windows in the back. So this one was a uh, um, the one I was talking about where I'm I'm using elements in Van Eyck's paintings. So the the window right. in the back. Or the win uh, the 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 round windows of uh, glass panes, those are right. Van Van Dyck's paintings. Um, the carpet and the tile design too is from is from that. Uh, um, they're from that period too. That's right, the, thinking, the carpet is actually yeah. a particular one. It's, I can't remember exactly. It was something like Holbein Type Two or Type Three, something like that, which yeah. which appear in a lot of paintings. Uh, diff in different variations of it. When you say the tiles, too, the you're talking about the blue and white ones, right? Right, right. Those blue, that those too blue and from, white ones also look yeah, familiar. That too are from uh, those tiles are also from from that uh, from his paintings. Yeah. And at the top, where you have the header of the chair, where you've got that blue, brown, beige. Is there a particular symbolism to that kind of uh, whatever that? What, well, it's it's, ve uh, it's very abstract, but it's supposed to be hair and then face. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought was, I'm, I was it. trying to figure out if yeah. is it some <laughs> archway? And right now, I guess I'm getting tired. We're trying to think of you know in the in the Gothic period the the art the sealed archways, which I forgot what they call what what that was called. The uh, it'll come to me later, of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on to the next image. We're almost out of time in, in this quarter hour. I don't know where to look next because, like I said before, my uh, my uh, screen is frozen for Skype. Pardon me. I am looking at Skype, and it's like, I don't know what to do about about how to refresh the screen or something. But okay, but I'm seeing it over here on Twitch, which is so this one of all of the of all of them is the most anthropomorphized. Right, it looks like a headless yeah somebody. So, and, yeah, well, go ahead. Yeah. So this is interesting. So that's actually um, an ironing board inside, and my mom actually made a slip for it. <laughs> it was, but obviously it wasn't in this color. It was in pink with uh, tiny, tiny dots of different colors. Um, 
so I grew up with that too. <laughs> so I thought right. that I really wanted to make it. Uh, um, so they're making it into a painting. There, there are several that are just the format, the vertical format of the uh, the two coat racks and this one. They're um, they're uh, uh, I'm borrowing from 19th century and early 20th century for portrait full body portrait format. Right. Um, yeah. So this is maybe that's why uh well with the dress it does really feel like a dress and it yeah yes with the color and everything and my mom actually made that so and the way I that the, the collar like it swipes across like that is is chinese seems to me chinese or almost like a mm -hmm. uh you know the quilting of it it looks like it's yeah. quilted too which reminds yeah. me of, you know mandarin dress or something like that yeah yeah okay one more chris we're almost at, We're almost uh, done with the quarter hour. I think we're going to get through all the images. And again, my Skype is while, while my Skype is frozen, my uh, Twitch is live. So I just have to wait till I can. Okay. Yeah. So this is the one I was interested in. Why all the umbrellas? What? There, Why I more than one? For example, why the six? There are six there, I believe, right? Five or six. Well, in, ter in terms of the number, there there is no significance uh, uh, for that. Right. Um, I just wanted uh, um, sort of decoration for for the coat rack uh, or for the the lady. This the um, so this is based on a, a painting by Ang. Um, uh, what no, uh, called uh, Madame Mortissier. So the 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 whole room is uh, um, uh, uh, is paying an homage to him, almost like. Uh, uh, someone who could be from that era, or coat rack, as a person in that era, yeah. So a second empire, whatever it was, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and then, the in terms of the umbrella, that's how it's being used at uh, uh, in my house. That's that's also multiple umbrellas. It, yeah. To me, it comes yeah. off like a butler holding all <laughs> of the umbrellas of whoever this posh family is that gotten mm -hmm. together for whatever reasons. And, yeah, who uh, also dress up their uh, their coat rack. Yeah, right. I mean, were you a big fan of uh, Beauty and the Beast? <laughs> when I was a kid, yeah, it was a little yeah. scary, but I haven't seen it in a long time. Yeah, just the original, because, well, because, the original you know, animation. Well, because the furniture is all animated; they're all living cre oh, people right. who've all yeah. been bewitched into yeah. these figures. Okay, so take yeah. us out, Chris. Let's see if my Skype comes back up. When you do that, when you stop sharing your screen or whatever, stop sharing. Oh, we're back. Yeah, I'm back again. Wow. Well, thank you. I, you know, and it's again, I, having you walk us through it just really uh, hips us up to how much is going on in in these images. So uh, we're in the last quarter hour, and I usually like to give people an opportunity to, uh, you know, talk about the future what uh, what's come because obviously this show w when does the show come down the one that's currently up at the in the president's office it's actually coming down tomorrow oh wow we yeah. just got it we just yeah. got in so people got to run yeah. over there yeah see it well it's been up for uh three weeks i think yeah yeah, yeah. so uh so what's next or what, what, what have you got coming up on your horizon for, uh, well, um, I'm not sure right now. I, I, so I'm in two other group shows at the moment. Um, uh, one at O'Flaherty, which is uh, um, they invite everyone who submit and they will put everything on, which is which is a, a bit of a crazy party um, uh, uh, audience. And the other one is at uh, Fields uh, um, Field Projects. Right. Um, which is up right now too. And I, I think I, since I did, I would like to do artist residencies, I think, again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I spent six months, uh, so this is before, right before COVID uh, in 2019, from June to uh, January of 2020. So I got back in time before, the, before everything locked down in March. Um, I would like to do that again, just to meet, meet more people Right. Um, artists and and things like that, because um, I I yeah, because my studio is my in my house too. It's not in the studio building, so I have to be way more active in in, in uh, um uh, I'm proactive in meeting people.
Right. I mean, what, if you were going to shoot for a residency, is there any particular one you're looking? I mean, I would like to go to Europe again. That's oh, uh, really? yeah, and particularly in in Germany. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There. Why? There was, why there? Well, it, like in Berlin, it's it's um, it's a little like um, maybe New York, at least pre two thousand ten. Like Bushwick was still cheap enough. Right. Um, I mean, it was so you're a, talking about the expat communities, right? So, so there were a lot of yeah. So there yeah. were a lot of creative people there. Um, the, yeah. the difference is that uh, Berlin is a little safer, um, even though the prices uh, of living is much lower, and it's got it's it's got a very similar um, uh, situation as New York, where you have people from all over the world uh, being there. So right, yeah. but it's. It, it it sounds less like a residency, and it sounds more like you wanted to live in other places for periods of time. Yeah, I, yeah, and yeah. make work. Yeah. Is it what? What about? Is it also because of the arts community in Berlin, or the, or whatever the 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 art that might be available through there? Yeah, it it is like in in terms of painting, um, like what I do, I feel like it's a it's a little harder um for people to understand because most people um consume. Uh, paintings or sculptures do Instagram now, right? Um, and a lot of them, uh, I feel like I um, don't think my paintings are actually paintings. So, uh, what do they think? I they think are? they're they think they're photographs, and I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure why, but I, some of them do. Um, and I just felt like when I my experience there, the the uh, um, just a different visual culture. They're more. Uh, um, uh, interested in, in looking at paintings and photography yeah the physical you're saying the, so you're the saying physical it, yeah the physical they're more interested yeah it, it's interesting because you know having taught through the pandemic and having had to teach uh art appreciation courses online yeah you know we got we got into this uh virtual trip mm -hmm. kind of experience where the websites and when we first came back and when i was doing face to face some people were trying they were saying like well can't you know what's the difference and uh you know i i try to explain that and yeah. you know the kind of harm that's been done to art uh by according to some folks by virtue of the fact that most people are used to looking at art on a screen yeah. i think you know, I, I mean the old days with books yeah i think there was but, a uh there's also a speed that's built into it too. So like looking at stuff on the screen, you're essentially right. like, if you think about the size on the screen, you might be 20 feet away from a painting. Then everything with the further you are, you are away from something, the less texture you're going to see. And the more the, um, what I was talking about earlier, the, Im the image, it, like uh, the only thing you have left is the image none of the material um, is there anymore when you're really, really, really far away. And that's, that's a little like uh, I'm looking at paintings or sculptures or uh, on the screen. Like installation, that's impossible. Like you have to go see it. But um, I, think, I think there is a, a, a trend of um, uh, ignoring the material side of, of painting a little bit. Um, well, that's, yeah, and that trend has been going on for 50 years. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't know because I feel like maybe in in two thousand, I don't know, two thousand sixteen maybe, it was a. Uh, it wasn't like that. Um, it was. It was no. a slow change. I think. Yeah. yeah. Some people would feel it began with Warhol and and the thirty five millimeter slide in the art right, right. history classroom. Yeah. And you know, an art news magazine that you know was in black and white. Yeah, I love so that. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I <laughs> I remember seeing a book on Turner, and it was in black and white, right. <laughs> which is which is incredible. They actually got it to work because they they so so what Turner would do is the sun and the sky would have the same exact value. So right. if you have it in black, if you just translate into black and white, it's just blank. There's no sun. So what they had to do <laughs> was to okay, the reason it looked like the sun was it was more in the yellow range and then the sky was more in the blue range. So then they, they actually um, used channel to place more emphasis on certain colors. So like with yellow, we'll, we're going to translate yellow lighter. So they still made it remarkably readable, which is interesting to me yeah. um, in, in terms of that process, that printing, as a side note. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's supposedly a great Turner show right now up in Boston. Oh, right. At the Museum of Fine Arts, a friend of mine went up there. I, I we went together. To Mystic Connecticut had a a show, but mostly what you saw in Mystic were studies okay. that became the larger. Whereas the show well, that, in Boston, that's really interesting. Right? I think it's the is the big pieces because and a lot of them are. I think that it's the Tate, you know, taking it, you know, for whatever reasons they're taking advantage of this time mm -hmm. to move work around, and uh, it's supposed to be good. Yeah, I saw I saw a, a Turner retrospective years ago. Um, it might have been t before 2010. That was a really good show at the Met. It had the really, oh, really early pieces too, where he had there were these paintings of ships docking and tiny people unloading right. when he wasn't doing oh, uh, um, landscape or more ab more more veering on the abstract but he was painting in all the all the tiny details and, yeah 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 the atmospheric mm -hmm. well we're almost out of time and uh, i want to give you an opportunity of anything else you wanted to share or folks you want to thank or well i want to thank you i want to thank you for inviting me and dina for oh, inviting course. me too Thanks on the uh, um to do the show um yeah okay. And where are the where are the besides the show and the president's guy again mentioned like where the uh, the two shows are that are currently on view of your work. So one one is at O'Flaherty, and uh, okay. the other show that is at uh, O'Flaherty and where O'Flaherty's is where Avenue C. So East Village. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. and then the uh, uh, field project said, yeah. is in uh, Chelsea. On twenty on West Twenty Sixth Street. Yeah. Right. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show, and thank. We should also just thank Dina yeah. Pizzarello, the director uh, of the LaGuardia Gallery, who put both of the sh you know helped made both of these yeah. shows happen today, yeah. uh, earlier with Roman. Uh, I mean, excuse me, Man and Roman, and now Shanghai Kevin Yu, our guest yeah. today here on. What's going on? Uh, for those of you who've been watching, so uh, you're, you've been watching LaGuardia Red Radio WLGR. Uh, what's going on? I'm your host, Hugo Fernandez. And uh, again, our guest today was Shanghai Kevin Yu, whose work is currently on view until tomorrow, uh, whatever time Dina gets in. I, I think Dina, Dina works at night, so they might have the whole day, but I wouldn't uh, take my chances. Uh, on the fifth floor of the E Building in the President's Gallery. Thanks for, thanks for being on. Thank Kevin. you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, thanks. And you got it. Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. And we're going to go out the way we came in with uh, uh, Joni Mitchell. And uh, I believe it's the Gray Room. Thanks. <laughs>